The Outer Worlds is an action role-playing game developed by Obsidian Entertainment, published by Private Division. It's available on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. My name's Mike Williams. These guys are Jake Lakowski and Liam McKelvey. Hello. Hello. Outer Worlds has a party of three people in it. Um, that's why there's three of us in this video. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to find all of our value in this. We've all played Outer Worlds because it's, it's only been out for a couple of days, but yeah. it mm -hmm. released everywhere pretty much it was on pc xbox ps4 got some good reviews didn't and it? it's even coming to switch later it is coming to switch actually and that's interesting but as per usual there's going to be a little bit of a delay yeah, it's going to be 540p and i'm going to sell it after two days the game, um, the, you're right the game has had good reviews but i'm sure yeah. people are clamoring to hear what we've got to 84 say about i think on open critic Oh, bad memories for the Fallout New Vegas team, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> um, oh, no, 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 they, they got an 86 on uh, oh, okay. PS4, I think. Oh, is it right. on, on, on No, on Metacritic. Oh, on, right. on Metacritic. Five people got it. And that's it, why they got... That's what, yeah. yeah. So Obsidian, the developers, uh, they didn't famously didn't receive a bonus after Fallout New Vegas only got an 84 on Metacritic. Well, because the, the big point um, was that they'd get their bonus if they got an 85. 85, yeah. So they're one yeah. Metacritic point away. Yeah. Um, so I bet you some reviewers who reviewed it less than 80, <laughs> 84 are feeling bad about that. But yeah. Nine years on. Yeah, exactly. Right. The yeah. hurt remains. So the game is sort of a, a first person role playing, you know, very similar to Fallout type of thing. We've had a little chat about it in the Special Moves podcast. Uh, that's podcast number 54, if you've missed that. There's, there's about sort of five or six minutes of chat in there. Um, but we wanted to do a separate video because there's, I think there's a lot to say about it because all three of us have played it via the Xbox Game Pass. In my case, the Xbox Game Pass for PC and Liam as well. You've been playing it on PC yeah, as well, PC. haven't you? So we're playing it on a couple of platforms. Jake's been playing it on the Xbox. One S. Um, yeah. If that matters. Yeah, some, yeah, some, some, Xbox, some, some tech heads are out yeah, there. Some, some FPS heads. If we're going to beat Digital Foundry at their own game, mate, then yeah, yeah it does. It does matter. Get I'm coming for you, Digital Foundry. So it's the, it's the one I am playing on, yeah. And uh, I've got to say, right, one of the big criticisms I've seen about this game from other people yeah. is that the UI size, specifically the tech size, is very unwelcoming to the eye, both because of the size and because of the colour of the text. It, it's very um, hard to read for people with dyslexia. Oh, right. People with, with, because there's a lot so of white, yellow and white on yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the, the general size of it all. Now, one of the benefits of standing in front of your massive TV uh, and playing it at like three inches like away Jake from the screen, do, yeah. like I do, is that I can see everything nice and clearly. So I didn't even think about that. But you guys are probably playing it on different resolutions or PC. How is the UI for you guys? Before? Perfect. It's really nice. It's been fine, yeah? Yeah. It's, I think I really, I really window, like it. No, I sit like maybe a foot away from my monitor, so it's yep. not a big yeah, deal. Right. It's the same here. Um, playing on PC is a different, different sort of experience, isn't it? But I, I think um, there is a lot to say about this game. But I think the first and the biggest thing that I, that I, would, that I would like to talk about, as I mentioned in the podcast, is the um, just the art direction and the sort of environment design because it just hasn't, it hasn't grabbed me. I don't feel, I don't feel like it is a coherent thing in a coherent place, and I don't, I don't, I don't buy into it as a universe, which is really, really important if you're a sort of role playing game that you expect someone to spend 30 40 hours in um, mm. but like the art direction in some instances like the ui and stuff i think is really cool i like the menu where like the, the logo is sort of overlaid over the shape of the ship and it's just like a simple little right, thing yeah, i fucking yeah. love it i, I really I, like I it i enjoy the loading screens uh, they're the, lovely they're very nice, nice. and the fact that they are used to signpost future quests for shadow things and also they're used to kind of Remember, like in four, like when three dog used to be like, and people will be pleased to know that so and so the bandits have been destroyed here or whatever. Mm. Well, it does that like depending on what you did in in the first place. Yeah, yeah. With the cannery, whatever side you picked, when you go to another place, you'll notice it in the loading screen. It will say something like, "The deserters have been brought back to town thanks to a hero" or whatever. So it's cool that the loading screens are used to, uh, well, they're personalized really. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. yeah. Reflect uh, your choices, and they, and they look nice. They I do. They're really cool. They look like they're very Bioshock and. And that's the thing with like the art, the art direction. I think is um, it's a tough one because in terms of the world and the universe, I, I, it's taken from so many other different sources. It takes massively, massively from Firefly, and it oh, wears absolutely. that on its sleeve. Com it's completely open and proud about that. You know, it's like it's done it on purpose. Um, you know, the first NPC is exactly like Kaylee or Haley or something from Firefly. I can't remember. She's like an engineer type. Uh, crew member yeah. um, and then yeah so Pavati is exactly the same person exactly the same, same type of character with exactly the same job on the, yeah, on the yeah. boat uh, the space really boat. excited to get on a spaceship yeah and fly out and explore the universe and then she sees engines and she's like oh is that the TXF 5000 and all you know that sort of stuff right, right. Yeah, yeah she's exactly the same and then but then the weapon design and stuff like you yeah. can have a gun that looks basically exactly the same kind of gun as what Nathan Fillion has in Firefly yeah the ship itself is on the exterior looks a lot like the Firefly ship 
It's called it's a already. Firefly. No, yeah, but it's a Firefly it's type a fi- Firefly ship. class ship. There you go. Well, Sci-fi it, conversation. It, it, I was going <laughs> to say, so this is lost on me, but but that's okay because I wanted to ask you guys who matter, the people that are familiar with Firefly and yep. Serenity. Is that what you want, though? No. Because people, because from what I gather, <laughs> feel free to scoff at me all you like because I deserve it, but from what I understand, that was a very, very beloved series that was cut too short. So yeah. is the idea of then playing a game very similar to it great or is it in fact like a bit of an insult that it's not quite weedonist i don't mind it weedonistic it's so sick man that's so <laughs> that's good. a good right. that's Let a good word that. well done i'm a big fan of firefly i don't really mind it i mean if they did just a sort of generic spacefaring thing anyway i probably would have liked that but yeah. i don't mind the sort of you know space western, western they're going for yeah right yeah i think it's it's very there's there's ammo in it and the producers of the ammo are firefly and and Oh. And there's definitely like some very obvious references isn't there 100% okay. interiors in the ship there's a big open kitchen space in the ship that you've got in the game <clears throat> yeah. exactly the same as the same type of space right. in Firefly there's also like a little cargo bay at the back of the ship which has got like a walkway at the top so that's exactly the same okay. like you know so it, do you think it's like an homage yeah, 100, 100, they're doing it on purpose yeah, yeah. Okay, they're, they're okay. definitely doing it on purpose the whole game is just an absolute uh, blender of like like Mass Effect Knights of the Old Republic Fallout Dead Space armor designs it there's does all seem sorts a bit of like influences a mood board. it, yeah, it, it, it does. feels mm-hmm. like a Pinterest yeah which is, I mean? which, like, is, yeah. which is the first thing I mentioned was the art direction and that's sort of what yeah. I mean like there's, it doesn't feel like there is an art direction it feels like there's just art from different things that are like so it feels like so you this think it's got like i don't want to put words in your mouth but like a bit of an identity problem because first of all it's con- you know just by the very nature of its existence people are mentioned in fallout right everybody's yeah. talking about this in comparison to fallout specifically new vegas because they did it and then i'm hearing this from a lot of people that have seen firefly that it's like this it's like Bioshock, blah, blah, blah. but i'm not really hearing much about its own merits i'm yeah. only hearing this sort of thing so, so like i say i like i've not played it by the way i think out of all of us i played it the most like i'm about halfway through like level 15 like yeah. 10 hours in but mm-hmm. as somebody who's not like a big sci-fi connoisseur i guess i just i just it's just spaceships in it and that so i'm just like get in there it's got yeah. more colors than fallout new vegas yeah yeah, this that's um, the thing. The 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 colors are you know it's it's got a no man's sky color scheme exactly. on it. Everyone keeps doing and this. It, Everyone's just bringing in what it's like this. Like, exactly. It? So you think it it stands up on its own way, like in terms of its writing? Then well, here's what's weird, right? I th- I think people it does it does get a lot of praise for the story and stuff, and it, it's in the same way that it takes art and ideas from from other games. The story there's quests in it that are definitely quests from the Old Republic, and they're definitely quests from miners colonies and, like, and get, stuff like that. You know, yeah, I but there's, there's, there's yeah. exact. I can't I can't remember what the specific example was, but there was one thing where he said the, the the character said, "Oh, he's down in the bottom of this thing, and he's done that, and he's in and." Whatever, whatever the character had done, that I'd had to go and I had to go into this level and find is exactly exactly what happened to a character in in some other game. I can't remember what the example was, but it was like you know like for like, and they're doing it on purpose, and it it feels like this um, thing that that does happen a lot, where you know the game came out in 1998, and then it has there, there has been no game since 1998, so then there's a spiritual successor that sort of does, gives you exactly the same thing and, and this game feels like a lot of that like a lot of tributes to other games well, and that's a lot how of... I find it um, but before I say more about that because it, I just don't want to like load it too heavily with just me yeah, about the game like you think it's all okay Liam you're warmest on it out of all yeah. of us yeah. like do you reckon that all the goodwill has been given to it because just because it's filling a gap or like what is it about it that you're really like digging because I think I've just heard me and Mike going me about so, it so far you know what's I new think... in it I think <laughs> I think you are right with that there is a bit of like it's filling a gap for a game that we haven't really seen something like that for a while yeah. and the closest we've seen to a game like Fallout New Vegas in a while was Fallout 4 and 76 mm. both of which were quite disappointing to a lot of people well Outer Worlds even is like a throwback to the the Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas that everybody loves and I think that's partly why people are warm on it but I think it's just a it's a nice easy going game really I can't really think of many other games that have come out recently that have been in this sort of very hyper specific genre type of no, there's first not person RPG where there's dialogue choices and maybe different... Borderlands 3 but minus the choices because it's that's minus not, the dialogue it's not the same thing it's not the same thing you are jumping from planet to planet in, where corporate shills are running the country there's deserters there's wastelands there's bandits there's lots of 
looking inside tiny little boxes and picking up loot, which are all like scrappy and but stuff the, like that. But the actual what? Borderlands is a lot closer to Destiny in that sense than it is to this. Yeah, I don't know. Numbers are still popping up out of their head, and, and the thing, the thing. Uh, aesthetically, them, they're very similar. I think it's more but, the uh, the player role playing bit exactly. is missing from Borderlands, where yeah, because you know, like Borderlands, you do have stats in Borderlands. You've got your like your different damages, your yeah, resistance yeah, yeah, yeah. types, but you don't have the persuade I know charisma, it, I definitely know what you mean, intelligence but... charm I think that's what people like about Outer Worlds a bit more that's the thing that I'm not feeling about this game you know it's the RPG element of it like yeah. to me this is like a brain off game yeah? yeah you go and you speak to somebody you talk to them they're like okay go and get this cache of weapons from so and so that's where it differs you run over you, do, 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 you go and do that you run back you either give it to him or not give it to him or persuade him to give you some money for it or whatever maybe it's because I've been spoiled by RPGs in the past couple of years and I've ju- I'm just yeah. off the back of Disco Elysium which is like the writing for that is unlike anything else so mm-hmm. so good that's that's so key though and and okay so if you compare this to Borderlands Borderlands is mainly a game about shooting this isn't this is mainly a game about yeah. talking and stuff which has got loads of shooting in it yeah. and the motivations yeah. for going places is really important whereas in Borderlands it's about loot and stuff that's the thing that's happened in games where there's so many genres are just fucking blurring into one thing yeah that this in terms of the, the actual what you're doing from start to finish and how much time you spend in conversations and how much time you spend in your inventory and stuff is is going to be closer to like or should be closer it's like a traditional rpg like pillars of eternity because that's what the that's what the game is but you're looking at it through first person and you're shooting stuff yeah like you do and in I'm borderlands feeling engaged in the, in the rpg mechanics you know right because it, because it's like i don't know there's just it's just not I you, think well, the, you guys really said it in the podcast that like basically you start up your points right yeah. you put a point in like I don't know one thing and it'll give you a point in like perception line yeah. persuade or whatever but then when it comes to like a conversation there's no skill check it's not like a roll and you've got like an 80% chance of doing it if you've got this or that yeah. you can either say it or you can't say it and if you can say it you're always going to pick that option because you get experience for it and it goes yeah. better so to me it's a no brainer and because so much of this game is a no brainer that when I am getting to the parts where I'm supposed to be engaged like okay you can either take the electricity from these people or these people I'm just like well none of them seem likable i don't really give important. a shit and i've just run you know everyone seems so miserable it's not quite as bleak as the witcher 3 but i find that a lot of the quests i'm like i don't care for, for that's me just, that's you know. that's the biggest problem and and with that so that decision you're talking about there you got to, basically there's a really early quest where you've got to choose to give power to one group of people or another people as in you know electricity um, it's like the first major choice you have to make yeah and it, first is no joke because it happened so early on. I was like, well, who are these fucking people? I don't know anything about them. I've got to choose. I've, I've only just fucking got it. I've got to this town and immediately you've told me that you've got, you need to get power. You need to get the electricity rooted from. That's yeah. the first thing. It's basically that, choose one group to doom. Yeah, straight away. It's and, like and walking into ha- a pub looking for a drink and then there's a bar fight, but you, for some reason, have to pick which person's side yeah. you're on. You're like, I don't know these people. I don't give a shit. And, and I, just, they both look like arseholes to me. Let me get a fucking drink. And just because you walked into a pub 10 years ago and that was a really interesting decision that you happen to really enjoy, it doesn't mean that that new pub is going to it's gonna work the same way. And, you know, the, that yeah. first quest is an obvious reference to the Megaton quest it's in Fallout 3. It's the Megaton moment, isn't it? It's That's the Megaton moment. And you go in there and you've, you've got to make a decision, but it's, it really doesn't give you enough time to get to get used yeah. to, or not even get used to, that's, that's a bad That's phrase, to you... get to know the characters and know the location and yeah. make an informed decision. Like you in Divinity, or, you know, some of the really good RPGs yeah. of had recently let's, let's use Pillars of Eternity just because it's the same people okay alright alright all right. you know what I mean even a quest as simple as deciding whether or not you want to feed the caravan full of people or not yeah. you can like you've got this like weird little aspect where you can like read people's minds and go on people's memories and stuff like that it gives you like this context that you obtain through different means like you don't have to get context from reading their mind you can steal a quest log yeah. thing you can actually like a lot of that if you've got a certain party member it'll unlock something else that'll take you into a cave and you need to chat to them and I think the first quest in Pillars of Eternity is a, there's a guy and he is like you need to go and help my friend he was killed by a bear in a cave and you go in and you can decide whether you want to you, you go down and you see the ghost of the guy who's been killed and it turns out that his friend left him to die and in sense yeah, murdered him to run away with his wife and you've got this choice whether to side of the ghost of this guy who's been wronged but is also dead or the new guy who's murdered this dude but then when you meet his wife the wife's like he was an arsehole to me he used to batter me I want to make a new life and it that, was like personal stories wasn't it it was like an yeah, actual that's the very first question 
Quest in, in Pillars. Yeah. So I'm using that because it's the same team. No, and the reason I'm doing it, I, I don't know why. I just feel confused that people who are talking about this game are talking about it like it's the second coming of this brave thing. And it's like, whoa, we've not had a game like this. And I'm thinking, Pillars of Eternity is what Obsidian yeah. have been doing between New Vegas and now. South Park stick of truth weren't bad, they, mate. They managed, you know what they I mean? managed to slip <laughs> South Park in as well. They yeah. did two Pillars and a South Park in between these games. And I'm just, and people are like, I'm tyranny. A, huh? I'm tyranny. Tyranny. It's, yeah. Uh, They're busy. You know, people are saying Obsidian are back, and I'm thinking they've never left. Yeah. And in fact, everything else I've played by them has been better. It's down to that gameplay leap. It's, you know, it's a lot to ask of this stupid, weird, above the, you know, this isometric view, Dungeons and Dragons, super duper nerd RPG yeah. compared to this quite light sci fi experience. So I get that. But I'm just feeling confused about this whole thing. Really. It, I, I'm just I, like, whoa. I think it's, um, it's, I it's unbelievably solid. I think it's a very solid game in, in a lot of ways. It's Bugs um, free for me so far. Yeah, yeah, it works yeah, totally it's been, well. Draw been distance been good. is good. And as much as I've complained about the, the you know, environments and I'm not I'm not really felt like I've bought into it. You know, sometimes one of the first locations is like a is another ship, so you can dock your ship in a much bigger ship, right? And you land in there, and then like the docking area, it's fucking great. It's just yeah. it's up there with like the No Man's Sky, um, you know, w- w- that mean, multiplayer area, Nexus or whatever. Yeah, that's it. You know, the Destiny Tower. I guess it's just just this yeah. like a location that feels massive, and yeah. that your ship is inside this other ship's hangar in an Imperial Star Wars or whatever Star Wars, it? and it feels massive, yeah. and, it, and it really the sense of scale is good, and, and there are moments in the game where you'll open a door I mentioned this on the podcast you open a door and what you see immediately the door slides open and there's just a great sight in front of yeah. you some really it looks like a bit of concept art that's made it into the game yeah. mm-hmm. and it looks really nice some of the gun designs look really nice some of the you know there's loads of good things in it and occasionally it does really grab me and I feel like oh I, you know what I think I'm into this but it's taken it's taken a while um, the first few hours I found pretty weak and it was just I felt like I was blowing through these areas like especially the first planet and like we were talking about with that quest earlier where you've yeah. got to make a big decision yeah. but I didn't care I, did, I had no reason to care I feel like I'd just arrived I'd just shot some dogs or some, something yeah. some alien dogs I had done the bare minimum yeah. and I was just blasting through this game and it wasn't like you got this big responsibility but it just makes you think Ugh. But I, ticking the box I think I've visited four planets now and it's like the variety is good that's worth mentioning yeah. it's very Mass Effect code kind of thing where it's exciting you, f- you, you feel like I want to mop up on this planet so I don't have to come back here and I'm yep. looking forward to seeing what the next one's going to mm-hmm. be it's not like really drawn out like in Borderlands 3 the planets outside they're welcome for me whereas this it's like you can see quite clearly when you go to the galactic map thing like that you will knock after a couple of hours how many planets there are so mm. like you, you know it's not like Skyrim where you just venture into one part of the map and something will pop up saying oh there's a house here there's a yep. cave here mm-hmm. you know how many planets you're going to get you, you, you know that some of them are linked to side quests and not And so do you think that some of the complaints I saw from other people is that the areas are are too small I don't think that at all I think the areas are just right because of that map because I know I can just jump in my ship and there's like loads of these other locations yeah. I can go to and it feels like a you know it feels open in a different way not in a it, I don't need to be trudging across the fucking wilderness for half an hour to, yeah. for it to feel if open if it was one map maybe like Liam you said that one of your favourite things about these games is like the exploration yeah element, just the it? wandering about it's and good stumbling though. across stuff do you think that would be better or worse if the maps were like bigger it's, each one? I think it's good the exploration is well, dense I think yeah I like I personally don't mind the small maps because even though I really like Fallout New Vegas there was a lot of copy and pasted trudging. build buildings in the desert wasteland yeah. Yeah. that's exactly like, what i mean you could maybe enter one building out of the five you came across you might get a bit of loot in there but i think these smaller maps do have some more interesting stuff like from what i've played you can enter the majority of the buildings there's like stuff to find there's people who'll give you quests and i think what i like most about outer worlds is it's not a very original game at all but it's a bit of a comfort blanket game yeah yeah because like it's got that familiar firefly art style yeah. that I like. It's got that Fallout questing that I like. It's got a Bioshock font. It's, it's got, got a Bioshock <laughs> font, which I like. No Mask Sky Colours. Yeah. No, Dead not, Space yeah, Armour. Yeah. It's, it's got like, all the things that you like from other it's games. It's not a revolutionary game. No. And I don't think I wanted it to be a revolutionary game. Yeah. I just wanted this, you know, this very tailored experience of like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, just from Obsidian. Because yeah. they did it best, in my opinion. And yeah, it's just like this really nice game that is doing a lot of things well. It doesn't yeah. do anything particularly ex- exceptional no that's enough for me i, I think, think i think the game i think the the gameplay and the way it handles as a shooter is is 
something that we haven't mentioned either yet in this in this video i think it's it's really good as, as a shooter the guns it's great variety as far as i'm concerned in the weapon choices you get four slots so you can put your points in whichever direction you want to go if you want to go firearms or uh, melee weapons or, or mm -hmm. whatever just as you would sort of expect but there's a lot of flexibility in there there's different types of guns that do different they behave differently they they look completely different sort yeah. of gives me a slight destiny vibe in the selection of guns and the way that they you can customize um, them as well yeah great modification system and I, I was really early on i was really like scratching my head like oh i don't i don't know if i want this this and this or i don't know which combination of weapons that i wanted yeah as a shooter it's, it's yeah. good it feels satisfying yeah. I definitely disagree. I think it's just the guns are shit. You're playing on a controller. You're playing yeah. on your console. No, I, it's like the and I'm playing like, on PC. every two seconds, my guns feel like they're breaking. It's like breath of the fucking wild, man. There there is I've got Deku Leaf, man. You yeah, I know. Yeah, don't worry. Eventually, I I have to give in. I wanted to put my points into good shit, like uh, I don't know, run faster. But no, it's like <laughs> I have to me and me clunky guns. True. I've had, I, now now it's opened up a bit more. I found some cool gun combos that I like. But yeah. I think when I was specking out guns and upgrading guns, I was I turned my pistol into a plasma pistol, which wasn't very useful or cool so i was like i feel like i wasted a lot of time making they weren't like badly informed decisions either because like there's no way you can be informed of how yeah. useful a plasma gun's going to be against a manta queen yeah so you get there there, there um, is overall slight lack of information in that sense i think there is it does sort of just throw you into it and say yeah, yeah. and because of that and it, explore yeah. yeah and i feel like very much like it's a coin flip whether you have a nice time or not whether or not you picked a random good decision or not so now that i understand the guns a bit more like i'm okay with it but i'm like the customization thing for me i'm just like give yeah. me a scope on there's, every gun there's a, there's a bit of uh, sloppiness in the dialogue choices as well where you know if a character is threatening you in some way and, and you've you know you're going through your conversation options but one of the options is uh, attack you know attack now but i noticed that one of them on one occasion is just say neither is this brackets attack right so it says neither is this, right? That ceases to be relevant after like the first conversation. If you keep talking to him, that remains as neither is this. Maybe the threatening character said, you know, it's nothing personal, and then you say neither is this, and you and you uh, attack. That makes him. sense. Yeah. But then the conversation has moved on, and he's no longer. We're talking about completely different things. I'm choosing yeah. other dialogue options where I'm trying to negotiate. I'm trying to like. Yeah. But then my attack option still says neither is this. So I'm <laughs> halfway through a conversation, I'm just just gonna say <laughs> neither is this, and then attack. It's just yeah. just that doesn't you know there's a few things like that i noticed i had this one conversation going where this guy was like being very threatening to me like really talking up the big talk like he was gonna murder me and everything and get his like goons to like break my legs or whatever yeah and i was being nothing but nice to him <laughs> up until i had the intimidate option which i could uh, luckily i could pass for skill check for it yeah like it didn't really feel like a natural progression straight away he, i clicked this option and he was going whoa, whoa calm down there you, we don't need <laughs> And he was like scared me. All yeah, with no trouble here, please. Yeah, he, was, he was like, "I'll let you pass. Don't worry, yeah. I won't hurt you or anything." I'm literally the sentence before that. He was threatening to kill me if I go near his yeah. face and stuff yeah. like that. But and it didn't seem like a natural progression. I suppose that's like hard to do yeah. in an RPG of this scale, though. Yeah, it, so, it's it is yeah. difficult, but that's why the greats are held up as greats, and that's why you know Knights of the Republic Two. You you know it doesn't tell you anything in Knights of the Republic Two. And the same people made that game. You know, the yeah. same studio made Knights of the Republic Two. Knights of the Republic Two, one of my favorite games ever, and you know there's a good reason for it, like in terms of story and stuff, and what you know you're introduced to a world in a particular way. You're drip fed things. Things are kept mysterious for a long time. You don't know what your motivations are for a long time, and that's interesting. In this, it's, it sort of just says, okay, well, you've crashed, and uh, here's how you shoot, and here's a barrel, shoot the barrel, and that guy's got an injury, and oh, look, it's some bandits, shoot the bandits, oh, and there's a town, let's go to the town. The town needs some energy. Do you, you know, it's just sort Neither of... Neither is this. It just sort of, it feels so yeah. sort of paint by numbers in, in, in the pacing and the structure of it. Now that I've finally said the word pacing, that was the first thing I said to you in, on WhatsApp about it a couple of days ago that is my biggest problem with it it's just sometimes it does get me and it grabs me and that's because it has some good moments in there as a sci-fi fan as a, as a rpg fan as an obsidian fan but it just the way it gets there just takes too long like this video i liked it i just don't quite get what the fuss is about that's what i'm I gonna keep playing it I, I was i was pretty sour on it but i'm gonna keep playing i'm not i'm like 11 12 hours in that's me i'm about five six i think I think um, I'm about to, I'm about five or six into it, and I'm going to keep playing it, and I actually do enjoy it. So I think that's quite a. We've got every yeah, opinion. Yeah, all the opinions. There. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure the majority of people listening to this, if you've not clicked off in rage yet, uh, probably thinking what a shit channel. You think, whoa, I've got some opinions. Well, listen, let us know. Keep to yourself. Yeah. No, you can let us know. You know, <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear what you got to say. I'm also. 
it'd be interesting to hear where you rank it amongst the other Obsidian titles. Because mm. to me... It, it's it, no Alpha Protocol, is it? It's no Alpha Protocol. It's no Code R2. And it's definitely no Pillars of Eternity. But it's probably going to be someone's favourite out there. So let us know your, your definitive Obsidian ranking. Let us know what you think about the worlds. And uh, let us know if you've bought it on PS4 for yeah. full price rather than get it for a quid on yeah, Game Pass. Sucker. As mentioned, we talked about it a little bit in the uh, Special Moves podcast. We recorded episode 54 uh, earlier today. So have a little listen to that if you want some more Outer Worlds discussion. Until then, see you very soon. Bye. <laughs>